as you can see, as a Dutchman, I cycle a lot. And cycling in Amsterdam is tremendously dangerous, as any tourist can tell you. Any tourist that has visited Amsterdam. It's tremendously dangerous. Why? Because there are traffic lights, but you do not have to obey them. At least that's what many people in Amsterdam seem to think. And I have a little um, film for you that shows you exactly that. How do people go about in Amsterdam? How do people travel on their cycle in Amsterdam? And this is a short clip that has been made really close by university. Now please watch it with me. Now this is a shocking movie, isn't it? It is shocking how these people drive around, cycle around in Amsterdam or walk around in Amsterdam. They do not look at the traffic lights properly. They're not obeying traffic rules. They're taking shortcuts. They're crossing streets when it's not allowed to. So what we did using this, this short film was we could see a first cyclist, and then a second cyclist, and then a third cyclist, not following the rules. And maybe we can conclude that cycling in Amsterdam is really da dangerous because of all these mad men and mad women cycling around. So we can confirm using our focus. And a focus is thus necessary in order to confirm your findings. There is a problem with the focus. And there's a problem in confirming like this. And we call this the confirmation bias. Why? Well, what happened just with this little clip, this little movie, was that you saw one cyclist taking a shortcut. And then you saw another one taking the shortcut. And why were you focusing on these cyclists taking the shortcut? Because we made a little yellow marker around it. So, we pinned them down for you. We created a focus. And if you would look again at this short clip, then you would probably see that about 95, maybe 90% of the cyclists did obey the rules, did wait for the traffic light. And those that did not follow the rules, did not obey the rules, didn't create complete accidents. So what we did was confirming what I told you before. And I told you, it's tremendously dangerous to cycle in Amsterdam. And they're all mad men and mad women cycling around. So we ended up confirming. And we created something that we can call an inattentional bias. 
by focusing on these cyclists, on these five cyclists that did something wrong, we didn't look at other stuff. In scientific literature, this is often called the inattentional blindness. And the invisible gorilla is often used as an example for that. And you can find many clips of that uh, on the internet, but also this research. In this research, radiologists were asked to look at CT scans of lungs. And on these CT scans, little, little gorillas were printed and they faded in and faded out. But since these radiologists were not focusing on the gorilla, but focusing on something else, looking at abnormalities, normal abnormalities in these lungs, they didn't see the gorilla. So this is what we call inattentional bias. You're not looking at something you're not looking for. And it's kind of related to another kind of blindness, and that is called change blindness. Change blindness means that since you're focusing on something else, for instance, someone telling about inattentional blindness, you did not see that that person changed glasses. Or maybe you saw something strange, but you didn't take notice. So you observed, but you didn't observe it properly. And that is what we call change blindness. I changed my glasses. Look, here they are. And this was how I looked before, way better. 